Hello, my name is Eric Fernwood. Are you considering a short sale? If you're upside down on your mortgage or you just can't pay the note, then a short sale might be the best option for you. In this video, I'm going to talk about the two things you need to worry about on a short sale, the process, how I handle short sales, and what are the next steps. The two key elements that someone working with you on a short sale needs to address is first, getting a short sale approval. This is getting the bank to accept a discounted payoff for the note. The second one is, and this is arguably the most important of the two, getting the bank to waive their six-year right to pursue a judgment against you. Yes, you heard correctly. You can be granted a short sale, and yet the bank has up to six years to file against you for lost revenues, interest, fees, penalties, all sorts of things. So the getting the waiver is the critical tasks. Now, whether that waiver is automatic or whether it's something that has to really be battled for depends upon which type of short sale because there's two basic short sales. Okay, the two programs, one is known as HOFA and the other is a traditional short sale. The HOFA short sale process was set up by the Treasury Department about a year and a half ago. This was in response to the long delays, very complex nature, and other issues associated with the traditional short sale. Some of the key differences between a traditional short sale and a HOFA short sale is that, first of all, you, the borrower, are released from future liability. Once a short sale is over, it's over. The time to complete is relatively short. You're going to know up front what is an acceptable price for that house from the bank. You're going to get a, find out up front whether the bank will accept a half a short sale. The, the holder of a second mortgage, if you have one, will receive up to $6,000 to help you pay off that second so you can get clear of that as well. And at the conclusion of a half a short sale, you could receive up to $3,000 in moving assistance money. There are threshold and eligibility requirements. These change fairly often, so please contact me for what is the current one. But one of the big ones is that both the lender and the investor have to accept HOFA. Another big one is that the first mortgage must exceed 31% of the gross income of the borrowers. Okay, on a traditional short sale, one of the big factors here is that the lender will not willingly give up their six-year right to come after you. Now, a lot of realtors and other people are saying, don't worry about that. Um, personally, I would worry a lot because in five or six years, you're going to be in good financial shape. And that's about the time that the banks are going to start going after people. So be very aware that this is not something you can ignore. Time to complete they're long, six to nine months. What exact price will the bank accept? You don't really know for sure until the very end, and it can change. Short sale approval decision, you don't really know whether the bank's gonna accept a short sale until you're months into the process. Second mortgage assistance, none. Borrower moving assistance, none. What is the uh, requirement in order to do a traditional short sale? very lender, investor, situational specific. Here's my process. First, if you're thinking about a short sale, call me. We need to discuss this. We can pretty quickly decide if it's going to work for you. If it does, you're going to need to collect certain information. Once you have that information, and this is where the difference between me and most other realtors begins. We're going to meet with an attorney to determine the best strategy. It isn't just submitting the paper. A lot of times by restructuring the finances and so forth that you have, you can make yourself eligible for HOFA, where if you just did a straight submission at this point, you would have to go traditional short sale. So meeting with the lawyers up front, Determining strategies, perhaps restructuring things if necessary, can uh, enable you to go HAFA, whereas otherwise it would not. Once we understand what the best strategy is, I execute the part about getting your home under contract. Now, note my methods are quite different. Most people are still using the same methods that worked 20 years ago. I can tell you quite honestly, it is not 
open houses, it is not a sign in the yard, it's not a newspaper ad. None of these things have very much effect at all on selling houses. Look at my website and look at some of the methods I use to sell your home in an internet world. Okay, once we get a contract on your house, then the law firm kicks into high gear. They're going to handle, handle all contact, all negotiations, and they're going to do their level best to get not only the short sale, but to get the uh, waiver of any liability if it didn't go Hoffa. Now that's critical. The law firm can make threats, claims, and do a lot of stuff that no realtor can do. And that's the reason that I work with them. Okay, fees. As you know, most of the people who are handling short sales are looking for fees up front, especially the ones where there's lawyers involved. They want to be able to get two or $3,000 up front before they start. Not the way this is done at all with me. There is no risk and no fees to you whether or not the short sale is approved or not. The only way that the lawyers get paid and I get paid is if we can get a successful short sale. Now we can't guarantee the short sale. We can't guarantee that the rights of the bank to come back at you can get waived. I know we do our level best and the law firm only does short sales. They are exceedingly good at it. They are full time at doing this one thing and they're very good at it. Let me state once again, no fees up front, no fees at the back, no fees to you at all. And if the short sale is not approved, there are no fees to you. So the cost is zero to you. Okay, the next step is up to you. If you're considering a short sale, contact me. Short sales can be a solution to a financial nightmare, but they are complex and you need to work, in my opinion, with a lawyer to ensure that you have the best possible outcome. Now, the fact that both the law firm and I only get paid if the short sale is successful is a good indicator of both our self-confidence and our commitment to a successful short sale. If you'd like more information on other resources, check the menu on my website. You'll find that there are at least two articles and links to other places. But the key thing is, give me a call. Thank you for your time, and I hope to hear from you. Good luck. Bye-bye.